So without further ado, I will give you Jericho. Thank you. And if you, uh, if you do the feedback and you have something negative to say, that's cool. Just tell me how I can do better. Uh, you know, and if it's like put a gun to your head, that's fine. As long as it's helpful in some way. So, uh, Arata hits puberty. Uh, for those of you who don't know, the Arata project's been running for 13 years now. Uh, it was kind of a surprise to me, too. Um, let's see if I can figure this laptop out. Okay, for those who don't know me, I speak my mind. I don't have corporate overlords. This is me in my spare time. And when I say me, it's a small group of us, but I'm kind of the outward face of it. Um, I use bad language to deal with it. If you can't stand to hear the word fuck, get out of the industry. You really don't belong here. <laughs> so, a rod in a nutshell, uh, we point out bad things in the industry. Uh, when I say the industry, specifically information security, um, as we go through this, think about why it matters to you as a person, to your organization, or anything else, because one way or another, it does matter. And if you can't figure out why, you need to spend some more time thinking about it. Disclaimer, uh, we do this work because we feel it needs to be done. Um, no one else is really doing it. Occasionally you'll find a journalist that will pick up on something negative and they will say, oh, so-and-so company did this bad. Oh, that's good, but you know, it really doesn't paint a big picture of what's going on in our industry. So we collect all these, put them in one source and kind of really paint a better picture of uh, how bad as an industry we suck. All the content on Arad is our own. We provide evidence in a story. We want you to read it and to give it critical thought. Do not take what we say as gospel. It's not. It's a guideline. It's kind of a suggestion. Listen to the bad guy, or who we perceive to be the bad guy. Listen to us. Make up your own mind. Who polices the industry currently? Anonymous, APTs. That's kind of that by any means necessary. Uh, we have professional groups like ISC2. They have a code of ethics that makes us be good Kind of. Uh, yeah, there's a, a talk, uh, DEF CON Sky Talks, about why you shouldn't get your CISSP. You should attend that too. Um, journalist, not for a long time. Most journalists are suckers. It's like, oh, this person's going to say what I want them to. Cool. Okay. Uh, bloggers, kind of, but it's very random. Uh, publishers, no, no, no. Bottom line matters. The law, like attorney generals, no. Not a big enough fish. So, who polices the industry? You guys should. Everyone in the industry should police their own. So, who's behind Arata? Largely, there's three of us. Uh, we have CJI. He's the uh, most active, along with me. Does a lot of the daily updates. Uh, we have Liger, who's kind of retired. He was hurting our volunteers when we actually had quite a few. I think quite a few meant four. Um, and myself. And like I said, outwardly, I'm kind of the public face of this, and I'll get into why that uh, has to be moving forward. So Arad has had a staffing problem over the years. Obviously, there's a lot of bad shit going on in our industry. There's a lot of security companies that don't live up to expectations. They lie to the customers. They lie to the media. They lie to Congress. They lie to each other. You get the uh, underlying message there, right? So when we do this, we need extra people to go through and look at what these companies are doing, what they're saying. And originally, we kind of uh, thought the idea of crowdsourcing that would be cool. Hey, spend 15, 20 minutes here, or, you know, an hour a month there. And if we did that, it would be a really neat, complete project. In reality, uh, didn't work out. So we had two big calls for volunteers. Uh, the first one, two long-term stuck around, CJI and Liger. The second time, they all flaked. On a more recent one, we had four serious bites, one stuck with it. And then I gave this presentation about a month ago and we had one more volunteer come forward and he's been doing a great job for uh, the last month. So the project's longevity is primarily due to a very small number of us crazies that are sticking with it. Oops, little background. So uh, why Laszlo? Why the squirrel? Squirrels are obviously an awesome little creature. They're smart, they're resilient, but um, we can't be ugly. We point out why companies suck why they should get out of my industry. And in doing so, well, that's kind of like spitting in their face. So we had a little more hostile version of the original Buck, uh, drawn by Joanna Goldman. And it's uh, kind of along the lines of Batman, needed a symbol to invoke fear. So we went, 
We went with Laszlo. Arata, it's all around us. Uh, here's two examples. This is from my uh, condo building. Uh, we, as auditors, should be pointing out the bad in things. How many in here do security auditing work for a living? Quite a few. You are paid to point out the bad shit. That's all this is. That's the same thing we're doing. We're just not focusing on one customer network or one policy or PCI or whatever. Um, oh, sorry. So this is what we call quick wins. This is the kind of thing where one picture basically makes our case. Hey, this is how you bypass security in my building. Great. And down there, oh, typo in a sign. You know, quick wins. That's what we have on Arata most of the time. Then we also have this case. So uh, about half a mile from me, this guy, nine to five, down panhandling. It's on the corner of uh, Broadway and 18th in uh, Denver. One day I noticed that, hey, wait a minute, that's a different jacket. So I started taking a picture every time I passed him. And eventually, I kind of built a little profile of this guy. And he's got a yellow, blue, red, black, green, white, gray, and corduroy jacket. Uh, he's got four hats that I know of. He drinks Starbucks twice a day. Uh, <laughs> and he lives six blocks from his corner, about four blocks from me. You know, so this is kind of akin to over time when you start to see all of this and you put it together, it paints the bitter, bigger picture of, for example, a charlatan or a fraud. And yes, day to day, that's how my mind works. Erotic coping mechanisms. We joke a lot about this, but it really is very bad for mental health. Uh, Oftentimes, we take significant breaks from the project. We will go quiet for weeks or months at a time. <clears throat> and that's because when you get into an industry and you believe in it firmly and you think that it's a great thing and then all of a sudden you see how it's crashing down around you, it really does take a toll. You know, it's like, wow, way to shatter my dreams and my hopes. Uh, so yeah, oftentimes it does take a little booze to uh, power through it. Uh, yes, we do make sure we're sober before we spot check it and publish anything. Uh, and anytime you see those lovely 2 a.m. Twitter rants, yeah, tequila sponsored. So a brief history. Arata's got a lot of sections. Um, it's been going on for 13 years, like I said. This kind of give you a little visual of where it started, when uh, different sections were added. Um, charlatans, media, literature, and statistics were the first four categories. Statistics is pretty much gone, media is gone, and literature is gone. Charlatan stuck around, and then these other categories came in, and most of those are still here. Uh, is it August, uh, July last year, we also set up uh, securityarata.org, and that was in response to a denial of service attack, which I'll get into. So how did it used to look? Thanks to the archive.org, uh, great project, we were able to grab a screenshot of the early uh, version and now look at the new one, you know. Yes, we are still stuck in HTML 1.0 land, and but we got over the pre tags, you know, that was the number one complaint, I think. Once I figured out how to do HTML tables, oh yeah, things got fun. <laughs> and it took a while. So, uh, Ledger, one of the things a lot of people ask uh, is, you know, what does it take to run this? What is the money like? Well, there's not really a whole lot of money coming in. We don't have sponsors because what company wants to say, oh, we're gonna sponsor your project. Wait a minute, you can't put us up there. Yes, we can. Yes, we will, you know. Um, so it's, this is basically all out of pocket. Uh, you know, we've gone through three boxes, a new router. We did some hosting, uh, all the, the giveaways out of our own pockets and everything. Um, we got donations there. I think we're up to about 1,200. Uh, 1,200 covered our one legal case we had to defend ourselves on, which I'll get into. So yeah, all in all, we spend a decent amount of money that goes into this, and we only get a few donations here or there, which we really appreciate, but we don't expect. Uh, one way or another, we'll power through this. So stats, what kind of, what's behind the scenes, you know? Over 3,400 files in the web space, uh, over 4,300 mails archived related to errata, and uh, most of those are about the more interesting topics, charlatans and such. We have 22 charlatans, 14 are on the public watch list, 27 digital plagiarists, uh, 86 or so two research charlatans, that's the unpublished watch list which you'll hear about, 
uh, 13 print plagiarists, which are books we'll get into, and one person that was on the charlatan watch list that's been removed. So yes, we point out the negative, but we're not looking to arbitrarily punish someone. We're looking for them to become a better person in the industry, learn from their mistakes, say, yep, I screwed up, I'm gonna be better moving forward, that's what we want. In a perfect world, we would yank everyone's name off because they got better. And by the way, if you have questions as we go, please feel free to ask. Uh, if you challenge anything, feel free, call me out, doesn't matter. CPO, certified pre-owned. This is when a company will ship you a device with malware already on it. You know, that happens a lot more than people realize. Uh, you see an article here, an article there, but uh, that's what it looks like over the years. And actually back in 92 was really the, let's screw over the customer phase, you know. And that was when uh, almost every piece of software you got had a virus on it. Autofail. Uh, how many of you use antivirus and you update signatures or update firewall rules or Microsoft Defender? Yeah, so sometimes these updates come down and instead of protecting you, they basically make your machine not work. It's like, oh, here's the update, here's the blue screen. Damn it. These are the incidents, you know. Um, these are a little harder to track because oftentimes it'll affect a subset of the customers. Sometimes it'll turn into an article or be mentioned on a forum. Uh, when we hear about it, we catalog it. Uh, all these stats are of, of July 11th, I think, of this year. So which companies are most responsible? McAfee. Any uh, McAfee employees in here want to admit to it? No? They got a booth uh, in the vendor area. Stop by and talk to them. Also on that list, Microsoft and Symantec. Yeah. Go say hi to them and ask them, what are you doing? to uh, make your entire SDLC bullshit, whatever, make it better for me, you know, and listen to the mouthpieces. Sometimes these are real minor, uh, blocks some legitimate network traffic, makes a program not run. Uh, one of the things that we notice in this is frequently, if you have, let's say, McAfee, it will miraculously decide that its competitor is malware. Oh, coincidence, yeah. Legal threats. How many times have vendors used the threat of legal action against a security researcher? This is a pretty bad one. Um, these are the cases that we know about. There are definitely a few more where the researchers like, I don't want the headache of this. We're going to get, you know, we're going to solve this on the side. I won't do the research. I won't publish. Whatever. Uh, these are the cases we want to hear more of. Um, obviously, the big ones that you probably remember uh, was it Mike Lynn, Cisco, Black Hat, 2005, I think. Those are the kind of things that we're looking for. These are the companies also that you should steer clear from. These are all the ones that have used legal threats to, uh, to stifle research. Has anybody noticed some interesting names up there or anything a bit ironic? Anyone? HP, tipping point. So follow this little uh, magic. HP uses DMCA to threaten Snowsoft. 3Com acquires tipping point. Tipping Point founds ZDI, Tipping Point tries to quiet David Maynard and Erotisec, and HP acquires 3Com. So basically you have this complete clusterfuck of companies that are all about stifling research, and what do they do? What does ZDI and Tipping Point do? They find vulnerabilities, and what's ZDI's current policy? Six months to fix it or we publish. That's all. You know, so it's really kind of weird and ironic. And then on top of all this, HP is the one that takes five years to fix cross-site scripting vulnerabilities. Yeah. So if you're giving them money, reconsider. Charlatans. I uh, have a feeling a lot of you are in here to hear about this. Uh, so we call out specific people or companies in the industry that we think are charlatans and frauds. To get up on this list, you basically have to show a decided pattern of lying, deception, or the intent to not be ethical. And typically it's with the uh, hope of financial gain or just, you know, casually trashing other good people in the process. There's 15 individuals, two journalists, five companies. The watch list has 14 individuals, and like I said, the unpublished list is 85, 86, give or take. Plagiarism, uh, yeah, so security books written by security professionals with ethics. And what do they do? They plagiarize. 
Uh, these are all the books that we have in our possession that have plagiarism in them. There's 13 authors for 19 books. Not all of them are being pictured. A couple of them are not pictured because uh, they made a vague threat against me, and if they want to try to carry out, then I'm just going to start publishing more and more of their plagiarism. It's kind of, you know, dog clicker training. Every time you say something bad against me, I expose you a little more. Uh, plagiarism to-do list. These are all books that we have been told have plagiarism in them, but just haven't had time to go through. Um, and real quick, RVA sec, someone said, you know, well, what do these publishers do? Most of the time, they ignore us. We contact them and say, hey, there's plagiarism. What are you going to do about it? They're like, we don't care or don't respond. And in some cases, uh, they say, wow, that's really bad. We're going to talk to the author. In a couple cases, they said, we don't believe you, even though we put all the evidence up there for them to go check themselves. And in one case, uh, the author, it was actually kind of like an executive author and three sub-authors. One of his authors plagiarized. You know, it was a bad situation, but ultimately the author said, this sucks. It was my responsibility. I take credit. Or, you know, ultimately the blame is uh, with me. So he released a second edition. He made sure that there was no plagiarism in it. And I believe the company ended up offering refunds and destroying all the original copies that they had left. That's the proper way to handle it. So now, what do people think? Hey, it was an unfortunate, unfortunate situation. It sucks for him, but he did the right thing. He overcame, and he was resilient. That's what we want. That is the picture of why errata exists, to help someone overcome the challenge and to realize that it's not a career breaker. It's just a way for you to do the right thing one way or another. Security companies. Uh, cases where security companies botch security, often in an ironic and embarrassing fashion. Uh, biggest offenders, Microsoft, 52 times. McAfee, about 20. Symantec, 28. Weren't those the same three names that we talked about five minutes ago? Yeah. Uh, security companies that send out spam. It's another good one. So, you know, oh, hey, we're security companies. We're ethical. Buy our solutions to stop spam, and we're going to send you unsolicited mail for you to buy our product. Yeah, it happens quite a bit. Uh, worst offender, True Secure. Anyone work for them? Wants to admit it? No? Security software. These stats are via OSVDB, the Open Source Vulnerability Database, which I also work on. Uh, OSVDB has about 84,000 entries, I think, uh, 84.5 maybe. Almost 2% of the database is vulnerabilities in security software, software you install to protect your systems that have vulnerabilities that open you up to more attacks. 2% of all vulnerabilities. It, does anyone else find that, you know, just kind of disgusting? Anyone? Who's going to do anything about it? Who's going to hold these companies accountable? Yes. And who is we? Customers. You have the ultimate leverage over them. You give them money. When you stop giving them money, they say, oh, shit, what did we do wrong? Enough people do that, they may change their ways. I'm sorry, can you speak up? Okay, so yeah, the EULA, the, the shrink wrap, the click wrap license or whatever, it protects them from getting sued. It does not protect them from you not giving them more money. No, 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 you're, you're not following. It caps the limit on any kind of punitive damage, any kind of, you know, revenge or whatever. It doesn't stop you from saying, I'm not going to give you money. I'm a customer. I'm going elsewhere. That's the way to get at them. So, errata done right, the data loss project. That started with us. Uh, there's an email here from April 2001. That's when I said, hey, we need to track data breaches. We were a little behind. You know, we got a lot of stuff on our to-do list. Uh, in 2005, it actually got implemented on attrition.org. Three years later, we said, fuck this, this is too much work. We gave it to OSF. OSF said, hey, we're going to do it right. 
So it went from a crappy little pre-tag HTML infestation to a real project where it has search engines, uh, statistics. Um, I'm also involved with it still to some small degree. Uh, we also do a huge push for Freedom of Information Act request. So we go state to state and say, hey, tell us about all the breaches that were reported to you, and we collect those as well. Um, anyway, so it would be cool to see each and every sub-project on Arata done right. Data loss, how many data breaches are there? Obviously, you guys hear about these in the news all the time these days. Uh, most of you are probably getting pretty numb. You probably have your personal collection of 17 letters. Oh, my credit card's been compromised, you know. Yeah, that's what it looks like in the grand scheme of things. And 2012, uh, we're already up to over 900 incidents. It's going to be a record year, to say the least. So, charlatans, confronting them. Does it happen? Yes, a lot more frequently than most realize. Uh, I tried to confront Ankit Fadia in Denver. There's a story about that. Uh, Sahil Khan did email and chats. Uh, Frederick Brula of HT Bridge. Oh, it help. <laughs> Mr. AV. It's working up here. I don't know about you guys. Yeah, everyone just pile up around and yeah, we got two big screens down. Oh no, those are frozen too. Not my laptop. <laughs> Get out here now. Yeah. Uh, anyone? Anyone? All I know is that he disappeared behind a curtain. The real hero. Yeah, reboot. Try to avoid that since it'll probably take five minutes. So yeah, it, it's flipping up here fine, but everything else is locked, and I want to avoid a reboot. No, blue screen. There we go. What's light were you on? Uh, it's a, quite a bit down. That's fine. And no, they didn't follow you. Okay. <laughs> this is the most offensive thing that I've said yet. <laughs> oh, there it goes. Yay. Except for some reason it's not uh, showing up right yeah, here. It's not. Nothing that's showing up here. This is probably some uh, antivirus software that's like, yeah, we'll screw his images. <laughs> so, as I was uh, shutting it down, I'm not sure what I could do as far as I would have to re-bring re, re them because they're, they're JPEGs, is that correct? Uh, they're probably JPEGs, but they should be embedded in the PPT. Yeah, so, without me completely coming out or whatever. Yeah, you could could restart you PowerPoint yeah. without rebooting, maybe? Okay, hero. <laughs> Stay close. <laughs> okay, so uh, confronting charlatans, yeah. Um, Kim Schmitz, everyone knows Kim.com from the news right now, had emails with him. Uh, Barry Schlossberg, AKA Lou Cipher, and tons of others. Uh, the times that we actually interact with them, it's, like I said, very common. Uh, just don't always necessarily publish them. Uh, sometimes it starts out very friendly. Uh, it doesn't necessarily get hostile, but it gets a lot more distant, and eventually they will quit writing. Uh, usually that comes about the time where I say, sorry, guy, I'm still going to publish all this, and, you know, uh, they didn't get their way. So uh, a lot of you are probably familiar with the term blowback. Uh, it's the bad things that happen after you try to do good things, kind of, yeah. Uh, blowback, it happens with us. Um, 
unforeseen and unwanted effect? Yeah. So Barry Schlossberg, uh, I don't know how many of you will remember this guy, back in uh, 99, 2000, he was the one that basically said, yes, I work for a company where if you hack me, we're going to detect it, we're going to track you, we're going to jump on a plane, fly to your house, break into your house, hit you with a baseball bat and steal your computer. Journalist believed him. So yeah, we put him up on errata and it was just like this small little piece about uh, strike back technology and this and that. And uh, 10 years later, this guy, the genius that he is, finally Googles, he's uh, ego surfing, and he finds it and he gets all mad at me. So yeah, we uh, had a fun email exchange in which he basically made some vague threats about flying out and hurting me and then he tried to say some group in Israel was like terrorist group was now interested in me. I don't know. It got really weird. Uh, all those emails are online. Uh, real quick, I need the audience to help me. Look to your left and right. Do you see any of these guys in here? Anyone? Does anyone from HT Bridge want to admit that you're in here? Because I know one of you are. Frederic, you in here anywhere? No? So I exposed HT Bridge as uh, what I considered charlatan. Uh, they have a series of advisories that were really poorly done. They weren't thought out. Uh, they were basically bottom feeders on cross-site scripting, SQL, and there was all kinds of other stuff. So I documented all this. Frederic uh, Brula, he's the uh, guy up in the upper uh, left corner, he emailed me and took offense to it and said, hey, you're wrong. And I said, okay, well, tell me how I'm wrong. So we had several emails back and forth, and uh, basically he said, this is how you're wrong. And I said, hey, that's a good point. I made some edits. Ah, you're wrong about this one, we would argue. Ah, you're right kind of about this one, so I'll make some edits to clarify. We worked together a little bit. The end result is some of it got removed, some of it got qualified, and I thought it was a good process. Uh, in the end, he basically very quickly degraded on his side of the conversation and started making insults against me. Hey, that's fine. Um, eventually, he called me a charlatan. Eh, that's fine. Whatever. You know? So I thought it was pretty much done. Uh, jumped to April of this year, and I find out that they filed criminal defamation charges against me in Switzerland. Yeah, so this is where it gets really fucked up because that's not the fucked up part. The prosecutor, well, first off, the charges are against jerichoandattrition.org. Apparently, when you type in, oh, I don't know, attrition Jericho, that first link on Google that gives my real name was a bit difficult for them, or they decided not to include it, and that's something else that Greg Evans couldn't figure out. Uh, so that's weird that they filed that. Now this guy, this uh, Johan Droz, whoever, he's a prosecutor, he refuses to give me a copy of the complaint against me. So I said, look, this sounds like a big setup, like a fraud or something, and he's like, fine, I'll send you the first page. It's like, okay, so I figure it's going to be like our legal system. The first page would be, you know, HT uh, Bridge or this, the country, state, whatever, versus Jericho. No. It's like the first page of the actual complaint, not the header. It doesn't mention me by name. It doesn't say Jericho or attrition. It just says, oh, HT Bridge is mad, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. So right now we're trying to work this out. Uh, I mailed the guy back and eventually established that, yeah, he really is a prosecutor over there. And um, I said, well, here's all of the emails we have ever exchanged, which by the way are online, and said, this is your case. Everything you need is right here. Uh, he said, okay, thank you, I'll review this. And so then I started doing some digging and found out that uh, for them to file charges, they had to do it within three months of their grievance with me. That meant three months from basically the first email that Frederick sent me. They waited eight months. It's like, oh, cool. So, prosecutor, three months, eight months, you're going to drop the charges, right? No. Okay, so you're not going to follow your own laws. That's interesting. Uh, basically, I pushed him a couple more times, and he said, well, we're going to have you talk to someone in the U.S. Okay, how does this work? A prosecutor in Switzerland 
is going to the U.S. to have someone over here talk to me about the perceived defamation in Switzerland. Who is he going to talk to over here? Which of our prosecutors are going to go, oh, yeah, that's a great case. Let me follow up on that one. You know. So as far as I can tell, because he's not going to drop it, these charges are going to be pending against me. And it's not actually, I mean, it's, the charges are filed, but I'm not, I haven't been convicted or found guilty or, oh, you've got to go to trial or anything. As far as I can tell, these charges are just going to sit there until he decides this case is important, which is probably slightly after never. So anyway, HT Bridge, if you're in here, I would normally say, hey, let's sit down and talk about it, but you forced my hand, have to talk to my lawyer now. Greg Evans, everyone's favorite. Yeah. So Mr. Evans is the distinguished winner of the Charlatan of the Year from the uh, DEF CON Awards last year. Uh, he will not win it two years in a row. We've got to do something different with that. Uh, Mr. Evans drug us into a lawsuit. We have more material on him than probably any other three charlatans combined because he is just top-notch at what he does. And what, and what he does is not ethical. Um, so we were involved in this one case. We were one of the eight John Doe's listed. Uh, Mr. Evans is very excited about lawsuits um, despite being involved in or filing 32. He's won uh, <clears throat> zero. Yeah. This is another case where he had a Pyrrhic victory. Um, basically, we had an article up saying uh, his, what was it? I forget her name. Anyway, the Legat corporate attorney that he hired resigned two days after being hired due to ethical concerns. So yeah, we put an article up about that. Think nothing of it. Then, months and months later, his email spool gets pasted online. And in that email spool, someone finds, I think it was the email that led to that, and they sent us a screenshot of it. And I was like, oh, cool. You know, This is basically more proof of what we've already said. So we put the screenshot up on that article. We just added it. Well, this lawsuit, one of the eight does, that's all he cared about in regards to us. Well, he filed the case, but not against me by real name. I'm a John Doe that has my name all over my domain, that's in the footer and copyright, you know, half of my stuff is copyrighted to my real name. He couldn't figure that out because Google's hard. And browsing the page to the bottom, even harder. <laughs> he decided to file this like three days before the hearing, told me about it through my registrar. So, you know, I got mailed to some gibberish at, you know, like, the, the Nick Registrar, which eventually forwarded to me. Yeah, that's the kind of legal trickery he enjoys. Uh, there's also other blowback, which we never pursued, uh, where he says wonderful things about us, charges us with uh, being colorful characters, and by that I mean he calls us racist, uh, that we apparently hate Jews. Not sure where he got that one. Maybe it ties back into Schlossberg and whatever Israel terrorist group hates us, I don't know. Um, he brags about his Twitter followers, which a year and a half later he bought, and uh, yeah. So we also had a company called Medica. Uh, yeah, so Greg Evans, right, so Greg Evans, you know, most of you have uh, signatures for antivirus and firewalls. We have mental signatures for reading a Greg Evans thing. So when he doesn't sign his name to it, we can pick it out in a heartbeat. No, you picked it out. That's his number one thing that will get screwed up. You know, so he's very fond of posting, especially on the investor forums for his penny stocks. You know, oh, this is a great company. All the classic Evans screw-ups, you know. So yeah, it's interesting that you point that out. Oh, yeah, so um, Greg Evans has no money and he's got no bank accounts, and he can't get any under his name. So he does it through his company and his family. So this is a case where he was trying to get an apartment in Manhattan under his mom's name. Whatever happened, they said, wait a minute, this doesn't seem you know, above board, what's going on? So they went to Google, Greg Evans. They found our financial analysis of his companies, which basically say it's worth a whole lot of nothing. You know, the cash in your pocket will buy him out five times over. Uh, so the guys basically 
wrote back to Greg and said, you know, with respect, we found this, and this essentially says that you don't have the money you're claiming. Can you clarify? Very professional. He just basically said, you know, what's going on here? This is Evan's response to him. Screw you. I don't want the apartment anyway. They hate Jews. <laughs> Greg Evans' mental leaps of logic are a little different than the rest of the world. Yeah. So Medica, it's another fun one. Uh, data breach. Oh, it didn't happen, but it did. Uh, we want you to take down the data loss entry. We said, but, but you didn't actually go to the journalist who wrote the story? Because that's all we have is the article to it. And he said, no. And I said, well, you know, get the journalist to issue a retraction clarification, and we will, you know, update based on that. And they said, no. And I said, fuck off. <laughs> yeah. That's one of 21 lawsuits, threats against us. Only one's actually gone to court, and that was the Evans. And the Evans was actually settled out of court. Um, Hacker Happy, it's another one. Uh, some of you in the room may have gotten these emails a while back. Uh, whoever this is basically said, hey, Jericho's a really bad guy. He's done a lot of bad shit, and they went and dug up all these court cases in places I used to live, and uh, if you actually look at the court cases, I have three middle names and two birth dates, because he would pick any Brian Martin and say, oh, good enough. You know, so apparently I was busted for weed, drunk driving, all these other things, and yeah, big mess of it, but uh, the one creative thing this person or people did is they mailed it to hundreds and hundreds of people in the industry, including my employer. My employer's like, what the fuck is this person on, you know? And I was like, oh yeah, that's petty revenge against Arata, we assume. Anyway, that was a fun one to deal with. Uh, we all know about Kim.com and the mega upload fiasco. He's got a much more colorful history of uh, defrauding people. We exchanged emails back in the day. Um, he was part of a group, or formed a group called Yeehot, Young Intelligent Hackers Against Terrorism. And uh, some of these real brain trusts would mail us and say, hey, we think you're doing or harboring bad things. And we said, hey, we think you're stupid. And Kimball jumped into the thread one time. All those emails are public as well. Uh, there's another one sitting here in his $10 or $10 million penthouse. And then he talks about hacking satellites. And we know how often that's an accurate story, hacking satellites. Mind powers, yeah. So, uh, blow back the denial of service. We got hit uh, November 21, um, lasted through December 24. It was a pretty aggressive uh, outsourced DDoS attack. Someone hired a botnet or was a botnet runner. Um, it was anywhere from four to 10,000 hosts that hit us. Dropped our web server pretty much that entire time. That's what led me to do securityarata.org, which was hosted on GoDaddy, I think, because it was cheap and fast, and yeah, it took I, I 20 minutes to buy the domain, set it up, copy the stuff over, and have it hosted. You know, we all have issues with GoDaddy sometimes, but that kind of convenience is really nice. Uh, defensive measures, physical, we upgraded our router. Um, Carrero, is anyone familiar with that company? They make uh, anti-DDoS hardware, anyone? They actually sent us one of their real high-end boxes uh, very, very cool of them. And they said, hey, test our equipment. And we said, wow, okay, you know, thanks for the $10,000 router defensive mechanism. And um, yeah, so they basically used us as kind of as a guinea pig and to test their new box. So we worked with them for a lot of time, fine tuning it and everything. It helped out a lot. Uh, ultimately, our connection, it's not very big. Um, you load the wrong file on our web server and Liger's movie stops streaming. Yeah, so it's not very difficult to flood us. Um, so the box could only do so much, really. Um, we tried Cloudflare, which was the biggest fucking joke ever, uh, and then eventually the new domain. So the rest of it, uh, EC Council, they were in the news again. Uh, one of their guys was apparently defrauding people and ended up in jail. Um, there's uh, Voice of Grey Hat. They had one of their little groups threaten to hack us. Uh, and then the scary one, Cat Techie. Uh, exposed her. She lives in India. Uh, plagiarism in a book, plagiarism in an article, a digital zine or whatever. So she starts out friendly, then she goes all postal on me, and then friendly again, and then postal. And 
I get really weird vibes, and then so one day I'm skimming and I notice that she tweets this. Apparently she named her dog after me. <laughs> yeah, and so James Attrition is also one of her many personas. Okay, so errata's errata. We make mistakes too. In the last 13 years, there's been less than 10 redactions that I can recall. My memory sucks. It may be less, it may be more, honestly, I don't remember. Uh, one security spam removed, uh, one security company article due to confusion of a timeline of events, but again, that's where the company said, hey, we think this is wrong, we looked at it, we said, why do you think this is wrong? They said, well, reevaluate this, this, and this, and we were like, oh shit, we, we screwed up on that one, yanked it down quick. Uh, point being is that everyone makes mistakes, it's more about how you respond to them and how you move forward. Uh, Dozens of articles have been edited for clarity with new information. I say around a dozen because I don't remember how many. HD uh, Bridge, Schlossberg, EC Council, InfoSec Institute, all companies that I had dialogue with. The lesson being, talk to us. We're open to new information. Um, one charlatan watch list candidate removed. Uh, we had to sit down at a conference a couple years ago, lasted about an hour and a half. Uh, I said my piece, he said his piece. He gave me information that I did not have at the time when publishing the articles, and I said, those are good points. I'll remove X, Y, and Z. That leaves A, B, and C, and basically we made an agreement. I will go review more of the material. If I find no more mistakes, then we'll yank it all down, except for one little bit that didn't, that it's kind of related to you, but not really. He's like, that's fair. I promised him I would do it within a week. It was three months later. For that, I really am sorry. I get sidetracked. It's a character flaw. Uh, Long story short, I did get to it, I did the review, pulled down all of the material, he got removed. And once again, the lesson is, it's not about punishing these people, it's about holding them accountable. And as soon as they start holding themselves accountable and to a higher standard, well fuck, we don't need to. You know, they're doing the job for us, that's what we want everyone in the industry to do. And it's the same reason why we police our own material, we hold ourselves accountable. And as much as we can, we stand up for everything we publish, uh, more so than a lot of journalists do. Um, hundreds of typos and stupid grammar errors, and like I said, fail to meet deadlines. That's by far my biggest problem with the project. So why does Arata work? Uh, it's open and transparent, much more so than the charlatans are. We cite our sources, that's our big thing. If we say X, Y, Z, there will almost always be links backing X, links backing Y, links backing Z. We want to give all of our work to you so that you can validate every single thing we say. If a link goes dead, we'll try to find a replacement. We'll host our own copy because we make a mirror of most of it. If we have like some real retarded logic problem like Evans does, we will fix it. If we need to, we'll, issue, we'll issue a correction or an apology. We attempt to follow ethical journalism practices. One thing that we don't always do is contact the company before we publish. Uh, yeah, I can argue that one both ways. Uh, historically, not a good idea. It usually leads to bad things being said on both sides. Uh, we have nothing to gain, no financial interest. Uh, we don't work for these companies. All this has done is cause a world of headache and a lot of burned bridges. It really does work. So, examples, Sahil Khan, Jason Street, InfoSec Institute. Um, well, at least two of the three, Sahil and Jason. They were the ones that we said, hey, this is why we think you did wrong, and they said, shit, you're right, I'm gonna fix it, and they did. That's, that's easy, it's simple, it works, you know? InfoSec Institute, eh, they started down the right path, and I only hesitate on them because in the past few weeks we've gotten more reports about them, and I have not validated them either way. So, we'll see. Examples through persistence, Greg Evans, we got him rejected from some security conferences, some media refuses him. Christian Valor, seven, anyone remember that character? Yeah, after he basically got booted out of the industry, three years later he got a tier one tech support job. So it took him a while to get back into the swing of things. Uh, Michelle Delio dumped from Wired. Um, and yeah, Delio was the one 10 years ago, last time I spoke at Black Hat, uh, pissed her off and I think she walked out of the room in the middle of my talk, because I called her out. Uh, what have we accomplished? Awareness and a sliver of sunshine in an otherwise cloudy industry. Unfortunately, I use the word cloud, I should drink later. Why care? So this is the big one, and I had to, I started to think I need to revamp this slide for Black Hat because it's a very different audience. And then I thought, you know, I really don't. Um, 
It's the ethical thing to do, for real. I mean, really, if you truly have ethics, it's the right thing to do. Hold yourself and your peers accountable. It's the ethical thing to do. Mandatory. CISSP makes you. Yeah. Uh, we don't care. If that's what gets it, go for it. Um, ethical things to do uh, gets you dates. Not really. Revenge. It's petty and it's fun, but hey, if that's what motivates you to call out someone for bad acts, go for it. And selfish, less competition in the industry. You know, if your main competitor is doing a bunch of sleazy things, hey, call them out. You know, get the customers to go to you. Why not? As long as what you say is true and it's not a glorified smear campaign. Like I said, we don't care why you help as long as your work is solid and well sourced. Helping. Have you ever reported an incident or a charlatan, charlatan to us? And if not, why? It's easy. Send us an email. Create a dummy Google account. We don't care. Send us the info. We're not going to publish it without validating it. And by validated, I mean through multiple sources. But we have to have the information to act on to begin with. Um, hidden agendas generally don't stay hidden for long. Help them escape. Try to avoid this, oh, well, I won't name names. Come on, I understand. There's times you have an agreement with a the company, there's an NDA. Yes, your hands get tied sometimes. But most of the time, someone says, I won't name names. It's just them being all ugly care bear. Oh, I don't want to step on toes. Don't be a pussy. Send us information, but do a little legwork. Oftentimes, like uh, for the DEF CON charlatan of the year, we got nominations. We got a huge list of names. It was an open form for a reason. Explain why you nominate this person. No one did. Yeah, so it doesn't really help if you just throw us a name and say, hey, he's a bad guy, you know? Blog, tweet, Tumblr, whatever. Summarize our findings. While we encourage someone to mirror our content, if you write a blog that summarizes what we wrote, and then you add your own opinion of why you think it's bad or why you think it's wrong that we wrote it, doesn't matter. The more content that's out there, the more Google rank it gets. The more Google rank it gets, the more all of this information gets in front of the media when they go to Google this guy, because they don't go beyond page one. So, expectations. Why isn't it lived up? Ours, community supports dismal. Uh, most open source projects or anything along those lines, they never get the support they need. <clears throat> Overall, it's barely having an effect. Most charlatans are still in business. And to do it right takes a lot of time. Time is obviously not something we have a lot of. Um, community expectations, they want more faster and more frequently. I feel your pain, but you got to bear with us. They want all the work done for them. Hey, here's a name. Go do all the research. Thanks. You know, uh, One of the things you don't see is like uh, a week ago, I spent four hours digging into a single name to determine if this guy deserves to be on the charlatan watch list. In the end, I said no, because he had a bad patch in 2006, 7, and 8. If I had published in 2008, he would be up there. But since then, he has gotten much better. He is writing a lot better content. There's no issues with what he says. And I said, well, hey, one way or another, he figured it out. He became a better security professional. And you know, that's the kind of work that you don't see, is that for every one we publish, there's probably five that we did the same amount of research and didn't publish. So why is uh, it not living up to expectations? Long-term and short-term burnout. Uh, that's why you will see us go dark for weeks at a time. Uh, personal and professional situations change. Employer backlash, something that we do have to watch out because the first person that lashes out me through my employer, well, why does my employer want to put up with this? Fortunately, I've got a badass employer that's like, we understand what you do. We understand that you keep us out of it. You do your best. As long as it doesn't cause any major headaches, that's fine with us. Resources, limited manpower, already spread thin with family, job, and other pro projects. And volunteers see it is not glamorous and they bail quickly. Why is it not glamorous? Because it's not the kind of thing where you work for five hours and you get your name in the spotlight. We want you to work and you're welcome to put your name on it, but we encourage you not to because the backlash is there, like we covered. That's why Arata has one really public face, and that's me. I'm the catch-all, I'm the firewall protecting the volunteers from the flood of bullshit from the charlatans that don't like what we do. And that's why everything's leveled at me. The lawsuits, the denial of service attack, the attacks against my character, all comes to me. And if that didn't happen, if it went to our volunteers, you think they'd stick around? Of course not. 
So what errata would be like if we had 13 years and one full-time person or three people, the project would look very different. It would be a lot more complete and a lot more interesting. If we had a real budget to fight anything, uh, we could have gone up against Evans on the, the case that we settled out on by removing the one image that didn't need to be there. Uh, we wanted to fight it on First Amendment grounds because the Supreme Court has case law that backed our side. However, the Georgia Supreme Court, state court or whatever, had case law in Evans' favor. It would have been a real nasty, protracted legal battle. I was all for it. I wanted to prove the point, but my wallet said otherwise. Uh, what if more in the industry wanted to take charlatans to task? What if it became just kind of a regular thing? Uh, what if we could cover all sources, bug track, full disclosure, conference talks, media? Uh, we gave up on media long ago because you know how many articles get printed with a rod in them? About 100%, seriously. Um, every company and conference used is a resource before hiring and selecting. Some already do. Some of them have written to us saying, wow, we got this stellar resume and this guy aced his interview and we went and Googled his name and yeah, we found out he's a plagiarist and, you know, he beats up nuns. People use our resource. That's what it's there for. And what if every media outlet checked Arata before inviting a charlatan on a show? So, thanks. Graphics. Mar does a lot of our art. Mar did all the, the custom Laszlo graphics, which are badass. Uh, Cupcake does some of the Arata graphics, uh, some of, like, the uh, icon stuff. Uh, functional Liger, spell checker, admin, sanity checker. Uh, a pass it, he does uh, DNS and admins the box that it's all hosted on. Um, Jay Dyson, who a lot of you knew, he was a fellow curmudgeon, uh, skeptic and admin. He gave a lot of good feedback. Space Rogue and Rob Rosenberger, they both are constantly sending articles and saying, hey, look at this, look at that guy, look at this media outlet. And a uh, long list of former Arata volunteers, and by long list, I mean it's a list. Any questions? They are wonderful, resilient creatures, and I am overdue on writing an article why they are our mascot, but it is coming. Where am I with B-sides and related personnel? That's a nice loaded question. <laughs> so the distinguished gentleman in the front row is referring to an article where I called out Mike Don and B-sides, Las Vegas from a year or two ago, uh, they had some very questionable accounting practices. Uh, after calling them out, Mike Don wrote a very passionate, heartfelt letter that addressed none of my points, and uh, he basically disappeared for a while. Besides, Las Vegas was picked up by three other people. I think it's Gene Kim, uh, Jack Daniel, and Banshee now, right? Those three are running with it. They are doing it in very much the same style that Besides we all know and love, but very different on the back end uh, about communications, books, and everything. So as far as B-sides goes, no problems, all good. Support them. Definitely support them. As far as Mike Don goes, people have asked me to write another article about it, and I said, yeah, at this point, it's going to become a pissing war. Probably not worth it. So uh, I encourage everyone else to ask him that question, not me. I'm sorry? Do I have attrition shirts? I think I've got about four left, and I will be carrying one or two around a day to give out on my whim. Uh, I see two people dancing in the back. Is that a question? Oh, okay. We'll, we'll see. A question down here? Uh, that's the one I, I mentioned, that we had to sit down. He gave me a lot more information. I gave my perspective. Uh, the additional information shed more light on some of what I had, and then I said, I'll review more of your presentations. I'm going to look for errata. I'm going to look for, you know, the style. Uh, when you gave it multiple times, did you start fixing things? And his presentations changed in not only topic, but the amount of research, citing sources. Um, he started making it very clear, his exact experience in it, and uh, he was on the watch list. So there was only, I think, two articles up to begin with. One of them was surrounding the plagiarism in the book, which I also addressed. So that one is off, but on the the book? OK, right. So the book moved over to the plagiarism page. And then the other one was essentially one long article saying 
I don't think he's an expert in the topics he's been claiming to be, and that's the one where it got decidedly better in the long run. And so it's the same with this other guy that I did the research, 2006 to 2008. Yeah, not so good. So some of Jason's early presentations, not so good. It's not all about that. It's what did they do afterwards? Serious improvement, a desire to not misrepresent, misrepresent himself. And it's basically that intent that I'm trying to do good, I'm trying to help, and I'm trying to be completely above board and honest about everything. So uh, off of uh, errata, I have a huge article about CISB and ethics, and I've got part two coming. That's also why I encourage you to uh, go to the Sky Talks about CISSP. I'll be doing a few guest slides, which are a teaser about the upcoming article. Uh, the first one is basically just pointing out this is why the whole thing about ethics and everything is a joke. And in the new one, uh, I actually show concrete evidence of what, about how they don't care about ethics, how they will just systematically deny ethics complaints no matter how valid they are. You know, so the guy that was, uh, that actually did the plagiarism in Jason's book, Dustin Fritz, CISSP. So I filed a complaint and I said, hey, Dustin Fritz plagiarized content. And they said, uh, yeah, we really don't care. And I said, well, wait a minute, you know, that's unethical. And they said, well, you don't have any proof. And I said, well, here's the blog and I had included this. And I said, well, here's the blog where the author, Jason, said Dustin did it and a post where Dustin admitted to doing it. They said, yeah, that's not good enough. I'm like, what the fuck? <laughs> so I've got a good relationship with Dorsey, uh, the legal counsel for ISC2. I said, look, what does it take for me to, to lodge this complaint? He said, well, how about an affidavit from Jason Street? Done. So I talked to Jason. I said, hey, you know, I don't want to drag you in this, but, you know, can you fill out an affidavit saying that you aren't the one who, you know, copied this? It was Dustin. He's like, you know, yes, I will do that. So I refiled the complaint, included it all, bundled it up, and they said, denied. You know, that's one of six examples, uh, technically five. They did can one, but that's because they went to him and said, hey, there's a complaint against you, and he said, suck my dick. And they said, that's all you have to say? And he's like, yes. And that's Joseph Black. <laughs> so yeah, Joseph Black is no longer a CISSP because he told him to fuck off. But the other five, they denied the complaints. And I'm going to include the PDFs of my complaints, the response, and the uh, ultimate decision by ISC2. And so, yeah, the underlying theme is that, yeah, oh, we care about ethics, but we don't care if our CISSPs break laws, plagiarize, or whatever. We're not about to stop their $80 a year revenue, whatever. Yeah, definitely, it's possible. Um, part of it is that I, I hit them on the ethics side. Uh, beyond that, I don't really know if there's anything else to hold them accountable for. You know, I, I haven't really looked. Uh, this is the only thing. So, CBK. So after the presentation at Sky Talks, there may be more things to pursue and to actually look and examine. And that's something that I didn't do, but the presenter did and his slides will cover some of that. So yeah, time permitting, that is something we will look at. Have we uh, tried to get funding or partnered with any company? We will not partner with any company because they will not have us. Uh, we are too much the black sheep of the industry. We say all the things that they can't be associated with and at any time they do something unethical, they will go up on errata. So it, it would be very hard to find a company that would want to do that. As far as fundraising, no, uh, and that's partially because <clears throat> in this world of Kickstarter where you set goals, what goals can I set? Oh, I'm gonna expose 10 more charlatans. That's real sketchy, you know, because now I have an agenda for exposing them. That's not why I should be doing it, you know. so. What's the funding really going to do? There's not going to be enough funding to hire me full time to do it. There's not going to be enough funding to hire anyone full time. It, it, it's one of those things where I could see it getting maybe thousands or $10,000, but in the long run, $10,000 doesn't buy anything. It doesn't even let us defend ourselves in court for any of these things. Is that? Yes. 
tomorrow night, dinner. Uh, we're going to be at the same dinner tomorrow night. That was, yeah. yeah. Huh? No, there's more questions. Uh, yeah, we've got a PayPal address up on Nutrition somewhere. Um, but again, right now, the, the biggest thing the donations helped was when we were buying a bunch of bo uh, books to check for plagiarism. It covered the cost of those, which was a huge help. So yeah, oftentimes, um, and it's not just that, it's like if you suspect a book, instead of just pointing it to us, hey, spend the you know, $8 to buy it used and send it to us or whatever, that's a huge help. Community legal defense groups. Um, I'll get to you next one sec. Uh, no. Um, the only one that I'm aware of is EFF, and we are way too small, uh, way too small of a. We actually uh, went to the ACLU. Yeah, we went to NAACP as well uh, regarding Evans and some of that. We've had no luck talking to any of those groups. Yeah, it's part of it is that it's a messy drama situation. What's their motive? Uh, they'd much rather bury it than expose it. Yes, sir. Sorry, I lost my voice swim. Yep. Mike. So um, over the years, we've had a lot of, I mean, and you mentioned B-sides and some of the questions on funding there. So we've had a lot of different hacker-centric charitable groups that have, like, come to us and asked all of us very wealthy, well-paid security professionals to donate to their various causes. And um, I know that at least one of those uh, may or may not be a 501c3. Um, I, have you guys kind of pursued looking into funding documentation, openness of the books of some of those charitable hacker groups as well? Uh, we really haven't. Um, part of it is that we don't have enough time to make it through our inbox, honestly. Uh, the amount of email that has been, it, it's read, it's skimmed, but not really processed, is staggering. Um, there are weeks where we will spend maybe 30 minutes just doing quick updates. Uh, if we had more time, more volunteer effort, that's something that down the road we could look at. You know, and a forensic attorney at hand or something, or forensic accountant at your disposal or something, yeah. Right. Uh, for us, I've got a, an actual ledger that's up on the web page that shows all of our income and all of our uh, expenditures. So we are very transparent, and fortunately, right now, we're talking very little money, you know, $1,000 either direction. So, yeah, it becomes very obvious where we're spending that money. Um, and if you gave me a $20 donation and I bought beer, I would tell you that. You know, and if that encouraged you to not donate again, it's something we'll live with. Yeah, that's the thing. We'll, we'll tell you exactly what's going on, and we'll live with the consequences. Any other questions? I will be here all week, so if you don't want to embarrass yourself or you have a fun question that needs more discussion, track me down. Um, I'll be here for the next few hours. I will be at B-Sides all day tomorrow and I will be at DEF CON up, up till Sunday afternoon or so. Uh, until then, expect us eventually. <laughs>